Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about the difference between categorical data and quantitative data. Okay, this is pretty important when you get problems in statistics that you could tell the difference of which data set you're getting. Okay, so let's start with categorical data. And I'll just start off with saying a little informal definition, but basically it's just when the data okay, falls in certain categories. Okay, so let's give an example of this. I might give an example, and I might ask 20 people, I might ask 20 people what color their car is. Okay, so for me to do this, I'm going to have to give them uh, pretty much options. And those are my categories. So I might say brown, I'm not good with colors, so I don't know if brown's a likely color, but blue, red, black, say white, and let's go ahead and say other. Okay, so out of these 20 people, they're going to basically have to pick one of these categories. Okay, so four might fall here. 5, we're at 9, 3 might say here, um, we'll say 4 here, let's say 2 for white, 9, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, let's see if that makes sense, 4, 6, 8, 8, 11, 16, 20, okay, so that makes sense, so that's basically uh, how categorical data works. Okay, when you ask the first person, they're going to have to give you a category. So the second person might say white, and so on and so forth. The 20th person might say other. Okay, let's do one more quick example of categorical data. And this might be like um, maybe like say are you gonna vote are you gonna vote so we'll ask somebody 18 or older if they're gonna vote okay so the two categories they have the answer from is yes or no and usually when we talk about data we're talking about more than one person so not one person but let's go ahead and say we're gonna ask 15 people we're gonna ask 15 people if they're gonna vote so basically the data that you're gonna be getting back are gonna be words no. and so on okay and usually when we get done with all these we want to go ahead and find the percent from each category okay or the relative frequency of each category so in general we want to do percents okay so let's look at quantitative data quantitative on the other hand is deals with our data has units. Data has a known unit. Okay, and what do I be, mean by unit? I mean um, the data is maybe in time, maybe it's a length, maybe it's a length, maybe it's in degrees, okay, etc. So it has some type of unit to it and what's nice about these is we could find we could find the mean we could find the standard deviation okay and it's measurable our data is measurable okay so let's go ahead and do it an example of this so let's go and say we ask Okay, so we're going to ask 20 people how tall they are, okay, their height. We're going to ask 20 people, and, we're going to, and the unit that we're going to use will be inches, okay? So when I come to the first person, I'm going to say, how tall are you? And they're going to turn around and say, oh, well, I'm 70 inches, okay? The second person, he might say, well, I'm 67 inches. 
the third person he might be a little taller so he might say well I'm 74 inches I'm 62 okay and so on and the 20th person let's make him 66 inches so if you look our data set okay is quantitative our data set is quantitative it has units okay so let's look at another example another example okay so let's go ahead and ask 10 people let's let's ask 10 people the time it takes to go to school okay or work whichever you may do okay so uh, let's say the first person he says well I live pretty close so he's 10 minutes the second person uh, he's a little bit farther so we uh, say 35 minutes okay and we keep asking until we have all of our 10 people and the last person he's pretty far so he's 70 minutes so with quantitative data I'm actually able to find the average time it takes these 10 people to get to work the time is measurable okay in some instances we have categorical data that may be in the form of numbers and examples of that would be say a social security number okay a social security number is not um, something you could measure if you had 10 social security numbers even though they're numbers you can't say okay well my average social security number is blah 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 okay another example of that would be zip codes so if I asked 100 people what their zip code was I can't necessarily find an average of their zip codes so there's no units to that so those would be examples of categorical data that's in the form of numbers and not in the form of um, some type of category where it's a word well I should say a word because you could have uh, a zip code could actually be a category because I could ask so many people do you live in this what zip code do you live in and that might be one of the categories okay so basically that's a um, that gives you an idea of the difference between the categorical data and the quantitative data on the next lesson I'm going to go ahead and do the graphs of quantitative data and categorical data okay for each specific um, situation you have certain graphs for each one so thanks for listening I appreciate it and have a nice day.